five years of weighing and patience and worry, being horrified again, you know, it, for all of that to pay off in this way, it's gratifying. Now, I uh, should say, if you purely want to see me talk about the technical aspects of this since I am going to be talking about the Switch version for the most part. That is where I'll talk about it and compare it to the PC version. You know, my experiences from those on when all of this is, is going to be spoiler free. I'm not going to be talking about any of the plot and I'm going to try my best not to show anything plot related uh, as best as I can. Obviously there are going to be gameplay spoilers from the first and second island. If you, if you don't want to see anything from those two then yeah it's probably best to click off first of all i could not believe i was playing sonic frontiers at first more of a holy shit, i'm playing sonic frontiers right now to watching other people do it like a like a bystander like a pedestrian the first time i got into the game and started really running around uh I could have stopped smiling, to be honest with you. Um, at least five minutes that smile wore off. I, I saw the doctor about it, but I'm okay. It, it, it was it was overwhelming how much there seemed to be in this huge world. And, you know, I, I had seen so much gameplay. So I, I shouldn't have really have been surprised at this point. Because it's not like uh, it was my first time going into the game uh, blind. But playing Sonic Frontiers for the first time, it was so refreshing how hands-off the game was it doesn't feel overbearing truly open experience where i feel like i could do what i want to do looking out into the horizon looking at all the trees and then looking at all the trees again when they finished loading in it was uh i don't it just felt it felt so special i felt like uh, there's so much I can do here. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do first. Then I run to a number of enemies and start experiencing the combat. Now, the combat is really fun. It, it's very satisfying to mash these enemies. You know, going for enemies has such a, a different vibe to it. You know, compared to other games, Breath of the Wild, DMC, or even Bayonetta, just to draw those comparisons because it definitely takes influence from them. You have a lot of uh, options in the game, most of which aren't available to me, but. Uh, even just from the starting uh, abilities, it's very mush and uh, it's very mush and bashy. Yeah, it's it's mush and bashy, button mashy. It feels unique, but it, at the beginning, it really does feel like I'm repeating the same things because because I don't have access to that much. Using the boost to dodge around and just dance around the enemy, using the side loop as well, which is such a, such a cool ability, a cool ability that doesn't that doesn't feel cumbersome at all. It just it, it flows so naturally into the game. I I mean I assume I'll get more stuff and form upgrades. It's good, but it does get repetitive after a while. Uh, especially when you f come across the same enemies, so it does it does get to be feeling where it's like, okay, I found a new enemy, did maybe do the silo, but then it's like, okay, why, why, why? Although I do have to mention the uh, skill tree, it looks like a skill bush so far, so I'm not too not too confident that's gonna uh, keep the game fresh after a long time of playing. Yeah, I really hope I'm wrong, but it does not seem like there's enough upgrades there. Uh, the actual enemy designs, so cool. I'm really glad they're not just the typical badniks, you know, with big googly eyes, uh, big googly cartoon eyes, which I, I like those. They are the franchise, but you know, these are very sleek and sh you know, almost knife-like uh, enemies. It makes me feel like I'm in a jungle because there's so many different types of enemies. Yeah, you know, just been you know, a typical grunt out, and then I can look to my left and. There's a goddamn wheel on the bridge. It's just cool. I feel like I could turn around and see Ken Penn is walking towards me. It really puts the island in a whole different context. It's these enemies, they're, they're so alien to the Sonic franchise. Uh, I just I just love how it shrouds the island in mystery. They're very Evangelion-esque, you know? It's the first thing that um, really came to mind, uh, especially when I saw the bosses. Oh my God, the bosses, those are another thing. I've, I fought one boss. This towering big arm tentacle motherfucker climbing on its arms uh, taking down uh, those little health pillars <laughs> it was fun it was kind of challenging uh, it, it wasn't hard it wasn't easy but it was challenging it was just the right amount of you know you have to actually put in the effort to beat this thing so much so that it, it, it was really fun uh, if, if there's more i can expect of that with these games bosses then i'm i'm really excited for the boss fights but yeah the enemy variety 
Evangelion Angels. I love it. It's such an insane next step for Sonic when I when I think about it. Think about Lost World, you know, Sonic Forces. Think about what came directly before this game. It's so new. It's so different compared to what this franchise at its core has been. Even compared to the more experimental titles like Unleashed, like 06, I would say this is, it does have most in common with Sonic Unleashed in terms of how different it was for the franchise. Azuka said at some point, this is the future of Sonic. Uh, I believe it. What a step forward for Sonic. It's such an evolution. It's just insane to me that this is a Sonic game because of how different the formula is to what we're used to. It's just great. Another thing is, ever since this game was revealed, this is, people were saying, this is Breath of the Wild meets Sonic. Sega needs to stop taking so many cues from Nintendo. It's obviously they just looked at Breath of the Wild and they thought, yeah, okay, we could do that. We'll just do Breath of the Sonic. This is not Breath of the Wild meets Sonic at all. <laughs> like so many were saying it's, Breath of the Wild has so much influence that I don't think this game could exist without Breath of the Wild. It takes notes, but this is far more like Sonic meets Tony Hawk's Underground 2 on PS2. The PS2, the, the one where they bully a poor overweight person and it meets a platinum game, that's what it feels like to me. Like yeah, there, there are hints of Breath of the Wild here, but when I'm actually playing it, uh, this could not be any more different from Breath of the Wild. This is Sonic Frontiers. Accessibility options are great. Wow, it, ever since that was uh, shown to us or it leaked or some person took a, the blurry screenshot of it uh, at a gaming event, we've found out that the open world has their own controls. These kind of accessibility options where you can fine tune your controls, I've barely seen this at all. You know, down to turning speed, camera distance, uh, camera distance I guess is more common, but these menus and w what they offer to you uh, in terms of what you can do and how you can change the game, it's kind of unprecedented. They've done such a great job of customing for how hard it is to control Sonic in a 3D space. Uh, that's obviously been a long running issue. Anyone saying the controls are bad in the open world, I really do feel that's a perfect personal issue and not something with the game at all. I, I'm not trying to be mean, it's just it controls so fluidly that I don't, I really don't see how this could be the game's fault at all. They give you so many options, it's a bit daunting at first, you don't know what you're gonna do. I personally, I've just today taken, taken everything off max. I don't really see a reason to take anything off max, so it does make it redundant for me personally, but I was given the option and that's great. It controls great. It's buttery smooth in the open world. Look at me go. Look at me go. Small gripe. The overworld music for, I think it's Kronos Island. Really, really good. The music in general is amazing, but the overworld music <laughs> really, really starts to get on my nerves because it constantly loops. And if you're playing on the island a lot, like I was last night, it doesn't always break it up. So as much as I like the song, love the song, it really, really does get tiring hearing that same melody. You know, it's a great song. Maybe they should have tried to mix different music into that. So there's not just one theme playing continuously. I think at times, obviously the music does change when you encounter a boss and I think when you fight, I'm not entirely sure about that. I, it's, it's, it's still a bit fresh in my mind, but uh, cyberspace is something that's I guess it is gonna change my opinion on that, which is partially why I wanted to do this. My first thoughts when I was playing Cyberspace was, uh, it controlled bad at first, to be honest with you. It just straight up did not feel good. I was very disappointed because I was struggling when I, when I don't feel like I should be in uh, some of the levels. It felt stilted, it felt very sluggish, but, this is a big thing, but it eventually felt really fine to me. I eventually got very used to it and I started having a lot of fun in the levels with how, you know, simple they are. The controls really didn't get on my nerves too much. They're not perfect though. They're good enough in that they don't really impede on the gameplay too much, but they're the non-boost speed is the main thing I want to talk about here. Ah, it's so slow. It's so... I don't get why it's as slow as it is. Uh, trying to uh, run through without pressing the boost button, without stepping on the dash pads, you're such... It becomes a Mario game. I don't know why it's as slow as it is. The boost is essential to the boost level design, so there's no reason not to use it, but still, it's kind of... It kind of is disappointing. I think it's ridiculous that the level controls are somehow not nearly as fine-tuned or as good as the open world 
world. They, re they really should have just plopped it into the cyberspace too. I don't see why they couldn't have done that. I understand that they're two different dimensions and all, but I really do think the game would have benefited from being able to find you new controls in cyberspace. Now, I don't know if anything happens in the game where the cyberspace controls change as you play more. Uh, I hope they do. I hope they do give you more abilities and such. I, I don't know about that yet. yet. First also in the music. Oh, that's so good. It's so... God, if you want one to. Uh, the Sky Sash really level in particular, godly. Just godly. As for the levels themselves, I'm kind of conflicted uh, about what they've done here with them. I I I've always been a bit annoyed and disappointed that they were just going to be reusing level design from past Boost and Sonic games, 3D Sonic games. But like at the same time, I barely notice or even remember that they were reused when I'm actually playing them. When, when, I when I step out and think about it, yeah, it's, it's kind of not the best decision but when i'm actually playing through the levels it's really fun they, they, they really I, I appreciate how they've brought a whole new vibe to this level design with how cyberspace functions in this game because even though even though they are just reusing parts and stitching 3d parts together where they weren't before they've made the old feel new and different it just it just feels different running through this even though it's something that you recognize i think the part of that is due to the fact that it's been stitched together which you know these parts weren't culminating together they went in succession in the way that they were before because you know you'd have a 2d part to break it up so in that aspect it's it's different it's it's fun uh, obviously the uh, objective rewards they help with that a lot trying to go for the s rank in these levels as well as going for the different red star placements that differ with how they were before in previous games being legitimately rewarded for progression uh, by doing that also helps cyberspace feel better but these levels are still simple and straightforward you know maybe this will change with eventual levels that come into the game i really did notice a huge lack of alternative pathways of me being able to make choices on how I explore the levels. That's obviously a big part of what makes 3D Sonic enjoyable. That's uh, that's all I can say after two hours of playing the game. Uh, it's a mouthful. <laughs> wow, uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed Sonic Frontiers. I thoroughly enjoyed the game of what I played last night. I am still on the first island. I've only played two hours of the game, so my opinion of the game is going to change over the next few days. That's kind of why I wanted to do this. Well, you know what? I, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to see you tomorrow. <clears throat> it's tomorrow. Now that I've brushed my teeth and flossed my teeth and also massaged my teeth and also drunk some mouthwash, I am ready to talk more about Sonic Frontiers, particularly the 2D sections. Oh, those 2Ds. Oh, they came back. Um, I liked it, to be honest with you. I honestly thought it was cool. I somehow feel like I shouldn't have liked it as uh, I do have the the gut feeling that the Sonic fan base uh, is going to kill someone over this, but it was very fun. I think it was Modern Green Hill. I was, but you know, I was uh, I was surprised by how non-linear it was. Uh, it, trying to get that S rank was really fun. Uh, you know, taking the top route, jumping on top and finding out, oh my god, okay, so this hoop is, you know, all of that, it was fun. The, my biggest gripe with what I just played there was it's it's difficult to look to see Sonic uh, on the screen. I don't know if it's because he's too small or because the camera's too far away. Or maybe it's my TV uh, on the Switch or whatever. But uh, I was constantly screwing up my positioning. And it, it got it got really frustrating. I, I just quit <laughs> the level uh, at some point. But yeah, it's uh, actually controlling him is not perfect, uh, but good. I would say. I don't know if that's an unpopular opinion, but I, I feel like it controlled good. Uh, I wasn't expecting, uh, you know, momentum or classic kind of physics, but all right, move on. Uh, exploration is getting uh, genuinely more and more better. It, it's out. Does that make sense correctly? Uh, I mean, maybe it does. Who knows? Uh, every time I discover something new uh, on my own, uh, I feel so rewarded. It's like I'm just, uh, I'm just screwing around, but screwing around is pushing me forward. I really do love uh, this uh, type of design method that both Breath of the Wild and uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus also employed, where you can really do whatever the hell you want. Obviously, you need to stick through something and just do nothing, but you can do so much, and that can count as progression towards your main goal. And I, I really do love that. Uh, Sonic frontiers does this as well there was this one moment where i was just looking around and uh you know th there are these lines I, I i never figured out what they were but i decided hey you know what? i'm gonna silo loop this i silo loop one of these things in the forest and uh, a bunch of hearts just come out that was so cool it uh, genuinely surprised me uh, when it happened i i didn't figure that that, that actually would have done anything i thought maybe i would have uh, nothing would have happened or maybe rings would have come out but it was cool i found another big boss uh a flyer what do you think he does shoots he slaps 
Fly really stood out to me. You know, that's it's been a long time since Sonic games have really surprised me. I guess mainline 3D Sonic games. You can see from the gameplay uh, what Flyer is. He's this quick step boss in the middle of the island. Putting that quick step boss that you need to grab and push yourself onto by actually jumping onto the surface. That's such an interesting idea. Not only was Flyer uh, genuinely difficult to fight, I, I don't know what the consensus is on this game's difficulty, but that fight, oh, it, it took me it took me a while to nail that down, you know, because you have to maintain your boost, you have to conserve your boost because it pretty much is the only way you can get close enough to do damage to him. But you have to also do that and dodge the uh, thing is, it's, it was really thrilling. Frustrating, but thrilling. And then once you get him down to sun health, then uh, it takes us into a second phase where you're on a big disc platform and that, you know, it's just, it's a real fist pumping moment where you do something like that and you just feel so good for it. Sonic Frontiers is, it's, it's genuinely doing that a lot for me where I feel like legitimately rewarded as a player. It's great, but Sonic Frontiers is a hard game uh, to me. I, I'm being, I'm being challenged by this game pretty hard. I'm down way more than I was in bosses, uh, even Lost World, which I would say was also kind of challenging. Yeah, Sonic Frontiers often does give you some pretty uh, demanding uh, things to do. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh god, oh no, what's going on? It's a blood moon! Oh god, it's a blood- oh, no, this- what? It's- it's not a blood- it's not, it's not a blood moon. I don't know, what, what the hell- what, what is this? I don't, I don't know what this is for. I don't see the point of this. I mean, uh, yeah. All right, cool. I get some coins. I, but you know, the slot machine is in my way. I, I can't, I can't see the road. Get out. It seems pointless to me. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of annoying. Speaking of annoying, it is kind of stupid, seemingly that cyberspace can't actually be fast travel to. From my experience of playing the game, I tried my darndest. Yeah, I tried my darndest. That's how you know it's serious to actually figure out if I could just go into a, some sort of level select. I don't have a clue if it's actually there, but I refuse to be beaten by the game and look it up because I am a big boy. I am a big boy and I refuse to use Google. Oh, Bing. Oh, Duck, Duck, Go. Yeah, I mean, I can't complain too much. You know, it, it is Sonic Frontiers, so even if it is a pain that you can't just immediately access cyberspace missions, the journey to and from is still really fun. Really do still have um, a lot of fun jumping up on top of uh, rails, getting getting down there. You know, it's it's they've made a world that's still fun to travel in no matter what you do, and that's very important. Also, in terms of uh, cyberspace, I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. You know, I'm, I'm getting quite the hang of it. I'm starting to feel the controls a lot better mainly because i i've been thinking of sonic frontiers as separately from the other boost games because you know when i played the game yesterday for the first time that was after hours of playing forces generations whatever um and i was obviously trying to make it control like those games when you just let the game do its thing and you think of it as sonic frontiers and you get used to it when you get adjusted to it it really does make the controls a lot easier to use i don't know if i don't know the hell if i uh, said it before uh i've just i'm thinking of the boost as a run burn now that's that's what I'm doing uh, when it comes to cyberspace stages. Kind of like Lost World, which everyone hated. That game did it. I don't even care what anyone says. I don't have a problem with the run button uh, in Sonic. It's not a bad idea. It helps with the control. Uh, moving on. The other level that I got to, besides the 2D one, Chemical Plan. Nice. It's so good that they're giving this uh, recognition to all the underrated stages that no one uh, had heard of. You know, if I went up to someone on the street and said, hey, what, what's your, you like Chemical Plant? They would spit at me, but you know, I feel like at this point they probably wouldn't spit on me because it's been featured in Sonic Frontiers. So that's good. Now that, that only was a literal half hour after trying to get to this one holy bat of a, a portal on the what well, i know you guys if you've played the game you can see that there that i know everyone else did the same thing and i will not take lies i i, I discovered i discovered a hundred hearts and became a lawnmower before i gave up and just went to look for a different portal that thing eluded me i i I, I, I checked out a big triangle before I actually uh, just gave up on it. You know, I tried to jump on it from a really high height. Uh, didn't work either. However, I will say, even though I'm seething right now, even though you know my, my fingers might be trembling, I really do love that there are things in the game for me to strive for. You know, things that I don't understand yet, I'm going to obviously have access to later. Uh, having, having something to aim for, uh, having that in the back of your mind while you're exploring, really does help with open world games. Now, Chemical Plant was fun but yeah I, I play sonic games a lot so the level design it was predictable enjoyable like i said before really did bring a, a whole different vibe to the game when it didn't transition to 2d i think i'd even
even say that's probably the best cyberspace level I've uh, played through so far. Uh, next Sky Scan, well, Sky Sanctuary. As a whole, uh, I find myself enjoying Sonic Frontiers more and more, and genuinely being disappointed that I have to stop playing. Look, uh, I will say that that doesn't mean that I don't have criticisms here. There are problems. The combat uh, in particular, honestly, it's still, it, it kind of is getting tiring for me. Uh, I'm just outright not, I'm ignoring enemies because I kind of know when it's going to go. I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same attacks. So that is something that is wearing thin. And of course, the cyberspace, that, that, that could be a lot better than it is. I could, get, I could say a lot about what I would want from cyberspace, truly. But the, what I can't say is that I, I, I never did feel bored of Sonic Frontiers when I was playing it. That's, that's, that's important and I, I can't see myself getting bored uh, for the next however long it takes me to play the game. But I've got about four hours in the game now. Um, uh, goodbye forever. I lied. God, you will not believe this. Holy shit. I found all the things and then I, oh my god, look what I did, look what I'm doing. Oh, this is insane. Wow, what a battle. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the super boss it was so satisfyingly good. It, it, it kind of it kind of caught me off guard. Uh, but <laughs> that that really that there is a super boss titan. That titan that really really was good. Wow. Hi, I I shredded this thing. I, I I annihilated it, and I still couldn't find a way onto the stupid island to play one seven. Now I've never played Shadow of the Colossus, but the, from the first moment when I stepped into that usual grass ring, I immediately thought of that game, you know. And oh, when you, when you go Yellow Sonic and the Avenge Sevenfold uh, come on, uh, whoever the hell band that uh, guy was from, it really makes you feel great. God, that was good you know from just punching him going into the phantom rush uh hitting that hitting that parry oh my god the parry and then god, it, it's it, it's like straight out of dragon ball z I, I don't know it's so weird to see this insane boss happen like like a quarter into the game and you know look at forces there wasn't even a supersonic battle in that or in lost world it's such it's such a change god that that that, that titan that boss what an experience going in blind and seeing that wow oh. so yeah i got off the first island you, you better be proud of me i got a certificate and everything only 50 percent well not only 50 percent uh, to be honest i i thought i had more that i hadn't done on there it's i i kind of felt like i had done a lot less than 50 percent but you know and that's what it says I, I don't know if that means 50 percent in terms of progression or what but you know the, what was in my mind at the time was um you know the, the game blows me away with such a cinematic fight all of that loudness and excitement uh, quickly turns to i don't know i guess it really it just it just quickly turns to awe you know seeing all of that unfold in, in such a tight amount of time and then just being crashed into the desert just being left to chill in that it's it, it, it was emotional whiplash in in a really good way it's i was really really gripped with the atmosphere at this point i, I don't know it just that complete contrast in terms of situation yeah i see I, I couldn't do anything but just slowly walk in the desert and hear that soft padding in the sand and, and then the aries island aris Ares island starts to come in with the guitar and it just got it, it it gripped me i said that before but it, it really gripped me that that atmosphere of this game is just it's just insane. I didn't feel the need to do anything. I just wanted to walk around. Uh, but yeah, then I got back to the exploration. I got to check it out. All the new enemies. The um, most useless enemy. <laughs> just a bumper that I just crushed. And that was... It made me laugh a lot when he just died. <laughs> yeah, it, Frontiers at this point really solidified itself in my mind. I, I just, I, I, I've just, I've fallen in love with this game. I really have. Because, you know, by this point, I also encountered the boss, which was so unique. I, 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 I really do love the idea of this boss being entirely fought. Well, not entirely, but mostly being fought by just highlighting these rails and, you know, all of this being thrown up there uh, to help me get up. Having to highlight all three, but also having to dodge those little obstacles—it's—it's—it's it's such a such a cr 
creative idea. I didn't, you know, I tried to think, I tried to think about a time when this type of boss would have uh, come up in a previous Sonic game and I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. It's, it's just cool that I have to, I really do have to commend the creativity of Sonic Frontiers because it's anything but devoid of ideas so far. I'm just happy that I can say I've you know, consistently been surprised. Now, now, keeping that momentum going, saying they do that, you, this game could ascend to a bit of a higher level in my mind if they can continuously surprise me with new ideas. So you know, I uh, I get the I get the warp portal key chain. I don't know, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, I get to the the first cyberspace portal that I saw. It was about half an hour of looking around that I finally got to that. I was uh, I was very committed to thinking okay, you know i really want to play one more cyberspace level right before i get to bed so i'm so excited to see what it's gonna be you know it loads up it's 2d modern green hill cool i'm gonna go lay flat in my bed and play some mario run uh, it was that, that seeing that cyberspace level that that was disappointing it was it truly was disappointing to get that you know it was still generally fun yeah as soon as i saw the green hills you know my eyes rolled and they just never stopped rolling <laughs> finished up the level and after that you know i i turned the game off and you know now i'm still thinking about it i'm still thinking about it and i really want to go downstairs and just play more but there are obviously a, a few important things about the switch version that i i think i want to talk about seriously that, that game that's wow that it's it's still stuck in my mind you know i've just been thinking about it uh, ever since i woke up okay so the switch versions graphics so uh, kind of a weird compromise between you know looking all right and looking muddy all of the footage that's been shown here was indeed captured on switch but I think it's worth saying that you know I did use the built-in record feature to even do it so it looks worse than it actually is truthfully you know it's it's important to remember this is a 2022 third party release so I have to say good job on the part in general it, it can't have been easy to make this in a time when you, you just have so many better options available to you uh, the pop pin was so yeah, it, it was really noticeable and it was it did get on my nerves it was kind of annoying the fps holds together generally there are times when it's kind of inconsistent and clearly doesn't stay at the fps but you know th those moments are kind of rare anyway you know it but for the most part, it, honestly, it was a it was a pretty damn stable experience. You know, it, it, never, it never threw me off. My eyes never uh, hurt looking at the game. And the strange thing is, there's, uh, there's honestly, there's times when the game straight up looks fantastic. I don't know if it's the lighting or what, but generally it looks okay. But sometimes it looks bad, sometimes it looks good. Once you get to the second island, the desert island, uh, unlike with the first island, you, you aren't having to look at a bunch of trees, a bunch of foliage, there's a lot less in the environment to be loading in. There are less relatively plain textures that you're going to be staring at up close, so from what I had played, the second island actually looks pretty great uh, for Switch, especially. It looks pretty much on par with the other best looking games on the console. In motion, the graphical flaws that are uh, objectively there there's no point in denying any of that the graphical flaws that are there really aren't noticeable and just don't matter that much what i'm trying to say is that it's good enough not so ugly that it actively hurts the experience and not so good that it actively kisses the experience first of all it's like yeah the 60 fps is better I, i'm not gonna try and act as if i don't notice the difference it's more smooth but in my time playing the game on switch and in my time playing the game on pc which i'm gonna go over in a bit as much as it does make the difference it's not so much of a difference that it actively impedes the game at least for me hell uh you know, unleashed on xbox 360 generations on 360 sonic colors on the wii those games those Sonic games, those quick Sonic games, those are indeed 30 FPS experiences if you can enjoy those. I, I think there's a good chance that you can straight up enjoy Sonic Frontiers. Stability is the most important factor when it comes to these games, especially on Switch. And for the most part, I do think that the Nintendo Switch does really retain that 30 FPS almost all of the time. 
I think the biggest thing that saves uh, all the plain textures, the popping, it's Sonic Frontier's lighting and Sonic Frontier's shadows that really help highlight the environment and make it look better than it actually does. Maybe it helps hide some of the blemishes. Let's check out the PC version. Now, as you can see, there are clear differences for one of these is Sonic Frontier's and the other is Sonic Frontier's. Now, it may surprise you to know that the PC version is more adequate. It's, it's true. It's true. That's just naturally gonna be a thing. You, know, you have more graphical options like brightness for some reason. You can do 60 FPS and all. More smoother gameplay. Technically it should be more smooth but in my personal experience it is continuously stuttering. I, I enjoy that yeah this, this tree looks better on the PC version. This These grass follicles look better on the PC version but going from PC back to Switch uh, didn't feel like that much of a downgrade. Right, okay, these are my specs. These are the minimum uh, requirements. I should be able to run this game pretty well considering, well, my specs. I had to go into the settings continuously. I had to decide between going into 60 FPS at a low graphical detail which blows or 30 FPS that has okay graphics. And at that point, for me, it's not really that much better than the Switch version. That's not even mentioning everyone's favorite little piece of sh Denuvo. Denuvo has been in every Sonic game since I think Mania. Denuvo sucks. It doesn't stop anyone from pirating the game. Uh, it's not cracked yet. It will be in a few weeks and all the damage they did with Denuvo meaning that the game is not as stable as even the Switch version because you know we all have different machines and even if you have specifications that exceed those requirements, it doesn't matter. It's still probably gonna happen to you. If I'm really gonna compare these two, it's not a fair comparison to be honest, but I will say that yeah, the Switch versions graphics do look a lot less visible. The Switch version is more muddy. There's less detail, there's more pop in. And one thing I do like about console versions as opposed to PC versions is that uh, every Switch is the shame. Every switch is the same. If one person says it's stable for most of the time, it's probably stable for most of the time. But with PC, everyone has different machines. Everyone has different parts put inside their PCs. The experience is not gonna be the same PC to PC. When you get the Switch version, you know exactly what you're getting. When you're getting the PC version, it may not even work with your PC. In my case, it works, but even when I limit the game to 30 FPS, it was it was still stirring. Mm, that sucks a lot. When I put it to 60 FPS, still stirring. Looked like the Switch version, and it was still stirring. So at that point, do I re should I really even bother? You know, I mean, the PC version is still better than the Switch version, but I like a big TV, so I think I'm just gonna go play on my Switch. You know, one thing I also will add on to that is that the Switch version clearly has taken away particular effects um, such as, you know, the cyberspace, which straight up looks better on PC. Um, it's, it's very subtle, but if you can see the, just the environment, you know, because this is cyberspace, these are like uh, digital projections and everything has kind of scan lines. Yeah, the PC version's environments look digitized and as a whole, they're just more crisp. Even outside of cyberspace, there's clearly a, a number of things uh, missing that have been taken away to cope with the Switch's hardware. So why the hell would you buy the Switch? For? I mean, like, you, you just heard everything I said. It's useless. It's a piece of poopy. So why would you buy it? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. That, that's yeah. Okay. The SWA in Nintendo Switch handheld mode. Yeah. You know, if you've played open world games on the Switch, uh, Breath of the Wild, Legends Arceus, Xenoblade, you know you got less resolution, uh, FPS problems. Generally, a lot more of a blurry overall look to the game. Too accustomed for the lack of power. It's it's so much more common with these bigger games because bigger maps require uh, get, uh, insert game development knowledge that I, I, I don't have. So because there has to be some drawbacks to fit into handheld mode, FPS drops are, are definitely more common. While I would honestly would say the game is genuinely pretty stable in docked mode, it's not the same case in handheld mode. It, it definitely stutters from here and there in handheld mode. That said, not as common as you would think it is. It's definitely not a PowerPoint presentation in any aspect. I, I still had a pretty good time playing the game in handheld mode, even with the more common FPS drops, but it wasn't too bad.
Now the resolution it does kind of suck. It's uh, I, I I don't know exactly what it is, but I assume it's not 720. So it, it plays in sub HD. Makes the environment look like a potato, a, f a fairly well chiseled potato that retains a lot of the details. You know, you, it would be a nice munch, but it's still kind of a potato. I do think that was also more popping. So the game, the game had a draw distance of two. You know, those technical problems aside, even though it ha does have those technical problems, they're not so bad that it ruins the experience in problem. So if, if you just have a Switch Lite, you don't have anything else, and you want to play Sonic Frontiers, it's really not a waste of money. It's still Sonic Frontiers. It's still a generally faithful version of the game. It's still a great game. It's like, ah, oh, you have like a huge 3D Sonic game to play on the, on the Switch. It's, it's, it's great. I'm frontiering in the toilet. I'm frontiering outside. I'm frontiering in other people's backyards. It's amazing. Now, if you're like me, even though it is uglier, it is more prone to FPS drops, but if you're like me, you honestly do forget that pretty quickly. When you start playing the game, it just becomes a minor annoyance that, well, it's just that. Minor. Now, the most important thing here. Does it have touchscreen controls? Nope. Naturally, it is a worse looking game than all the other platforms. That's unavoidable. But consider this, you know, if I'm someone who's enjoying this game as much as I have been, you've heard me gush for the past 20, 30, 40, I don't know, minutes. It's... If this version of the game can make me this happy, I can tell you it's a stunning experience for any Sonic fan on any console or PC. Clearly, the Switch version can't be all that bad at all. It's an extremely competent version. And when they said Sonic Frontiers on Switch is the same experience as everyone else, I can't help but feel like yeah, it is. So yeah, looking at the day now, it's it has been four days since Sonic Frontiers came out. God, I, I've only I've only come to love this game even more. Every single day I've seen new things, I've seen more and more things, and the Sonic fan inside of me has felt so, so relieved that the wait, the five year wait was over. My expectations were always kind of low about Sonic Frontiers, not because I thought they were going to screw it up, just because I didn't want to be let down again. Even through the early doubts, the early months when they were showing us very little, when they were showing us very, kind of, well, rough gameplay, I was still rooting for it. I just didn't want to count them out. But now that it's finally come out, I'm so happy about everything here. I'm happy about the story. I'm not gonna say anything about, but I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm happy about how, even though it's been 11 years since the last good 3D Sonic game, they still came through in the end and they proved that it doesn't really matter how long it's been since this company's released your last favorite game, you, they can still surprise you. And Sonic Team has surprised everyone. Now, that, 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 that doesn't mean I'm 100% happy with it. Uh, I do have to admit, I kind of wish the cyberspace in Sonic Frontiers, it really could have been so much better than it is. Because there's this, seemingly there's only four themes with cyberspace. I haven't beat the game yet. I'm, I guess, a third through it. I'm not entirely sure how much I've played of it, but I'm already getting tired of seeing Green Hill, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary, and I don't know, New York, New York L London, City, I guess it's called City, Scraper. It's just, it, it, it gets, it's getting tiring seeing these same old locales, especially after they've been repeated since generations. Come on, it's, do you, do you really think I'm gonna get excited seeing classic Sky Sanctuary in the Sky Sanctuary style? No, oh, give me Sky Sanctuary in the Jungle Joyride style. God, <laughs> Cyberspace has so much potential. I fully get why it is the way it is. Sonic Team made this with a team of 60 people. So I get that this game's flaws, this game's lack of depth, even in the places where it does a good job, it's entirely due to the fact that Sega somehow does not think that they are deserving of more people. They are not deserving of a bigger budget. And the, the only reason cyberspace is the way it is, is because there's only so much they can focus on cyberspace and the open world. This time, they gave us a good balance of it. I think they made a few really highly detailed uh, aesthetics, and then they designed all the cyberspace stages around that. I'm okay with C. That's definitely something that I think Sonic Frontiers could do so much 
much better. As well as the cyberspace controls not being as tight as the open world controls. To me, they're fine. A lot of people don't like them. I've been checking a few opinions out. So I, see, I do see that a lot of people aren't too happy with the cyberspace controls. I think they're fine. Even though the combat is really good, I wish the combat had a bit more depth to it. I wish the enemies, I wish the game focused a bit more on enemy layouts and some more smarter enemies, hitting you with different types of enemy types at once. Because a lot of the time you just walk in, you see one type of enemy and they don't try and group up on you. The only type times when I think I've been grouped up on is when the four small guys come up. I, I really do wish that there was even more to the skill tree even. I mean, am I, am I allowed to say that? I feel like I'm allowed to say that. I haven't gotten everything in the skill tree yet, but I'm already halfway through it. Uh, one of the upgrades was auto combat. Why is that, a, that, that, it gets added to the options menu. That should not be an upgrade, for instance. I, I really do wish there was more to the combat and skill tree. I wish the parry wasn't a hold. The parry being uh, something that you hold and wait. It's basically just a glorified block that gives you so much more value than the effort you put in. I, I, I do wish that it was a proper parry that you can only accomplish when you've hit something at the right exact time. Now those, those were just my four or five days with Sonic Frontier, so I, I haven't played the whole game yet. I could feel differently about this at the end. How I feel now and the, enjo the enjoyment that I've gotten from the game thus far, I'm so happy this game. This game is great. Sonic Frontiers is a great, great game. Yeah, it's another through good 3D Sonic to add to the collection. Every day that I've been coming here and playing the game a bit more, recording my thoughts and playing it each night, I, I just got, I got more and more excited uh, as I played the game more and more. Ultimately, that's, that's a great thing. It not only gave me great first impressions, but I'm still thinking thinking about it in a very high light. So good job, Sonic Team. You know, seriously, good job. I'm confident in saying this, this was worth the wait. Now let's just hope that next time, Sega is willing to help you do an amazing job. Well, one, one last thing. <laughs> oh, I, I just, I, I just got an email from YouTube. Oh, oh, Sonic Frontiers. Available now. No, 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 not available on Ouya. Remember that. Remember that.